Hello guys, Sir Grandelot here. Today I want to give you a video with an overview of the game progression in Undecember, uh, trying to give you an idea of what to do from the very beginning until the end game, uh, as well as mentioning some of the micromanagement things that uh, some people tend to ignore or undervalue, but they can be extremely valuable uh, for your overall character progression. Everything, of course, starts with the campaign. Uh, the campaign is very linear, but if you speed through it a bit too quickly, you will reach later stages of the campaign uh, being a little bit under level. Uh, in my case, in this area, which is level 67, I was level 58, I was having a slightly rough time. Uh, level in itself in the game in this game doesn't matter too much but leveling up a little bit may allow you to use um, different gear um, higher level gear and to unlock some skills from the zodiac that could improve your situation a lot so if you're having a slightly rough time here and there spending a little bit of time clearing uh, a couple of uh, areas that you're comfortable with and getting a few levels can actually help you a lot also, each act uh, is characterized by one kind of damage um, that you're going to re be receiving and it's going to change uh, each act. Meaning that, for example, if you reach act 4 and you have zero lightning resistance, you, you may be having a very rough time. But if you reach act 3 and you found some gear with a lot of poison resistance, it, it will feel like a breeze uh, for you. For me, the biggest difficulty spike in the beginning was the boss of act 5 because in addition to cold damage, which I had kept at the time, uh, he also deals a ton of physical damage and that was not very good for my caster with a 0% physical damage reduction. I had a very very bad time with this guy. Uh, try not to use uh, too many resurrection scrolls uh, through the campaign uh, for two reasons. The first one is that this boss, the end boss of the game, can, can be quite nasty. So you want to have a few resurrection scrolls uh, available after you learn the attack patterns. And I also had a slightly rough time here, but it was for the same reason of the boss uh, uh, in Act 5, my non-existent physical damage reduction. If you're having a difficult time clearing a specific act uh, just because you're taking too much damage, the Zodiac can be extremely valuable. Uh, once you unlock this constellation, the number 4, uh, there is a node that will actually allow you to improve your elemental resistances quite a bit. You just need 3 points, 3 trade points, and depending on which act you're clearing, you can boost your elemental resistance for that specific act. And then if you want, you can also invest a couple of extra points to increase your hit points or your mana, you know, anything you need. Uh, the Zodiac can be respected for free as much as you want until you complete Act 10, meaning that Acts 1 to 10 uh, are ideal for testing things, playing around with your build and making sure that you can progress through the game uh, without getting one shot by the monsters. Speaking of valuable tools, each map at the bottom right have a teleport to the training arena. The training arena is this place uh, with a bunch of scarecrows. You can actually have um, as many as you want, essentially. And you can make a recording of your skills uh, to see how much damage they're doing over a certain period of time. And this tool is extremely valuable because it will allow you to see how much uh, each skill uh, is contributing to your, your overall uh, damage. And if you have some new equipment, but you are not sure if it's really much better, you can come here to test it. And this tool is going to be extremely valuable for you. So anytime that you want to test some new skill or gear, spend a few minutes here and it's, it's going to be very good. A very common topic that you will find on Reddit or forums where people discuss on December is what build should I make, what character should I make, which equipment should I use. Uh, we don't have uh, a proper character builder website at the moment, and it's a little bit annoying. But what you can do is, anytime you're in town, you go to the recruitment board. And one of the options in the recruitment board is going to be the ranking. It's going to give you the, the leaders uh, of uh, many different... Uh, uh, things in the game. Uh, what you can do is have a look at their builds, see what they're playing, and this will give you an idea of how people are linking their rooms, what kind of equipment they're using, uh, and all this sort of stuff. Uh, you don't need to do a copy-paste, uh, especially if you are a new player, you will not be having a 6 sync room for a while. Uh, every now and then you will see people with legendary rooms, but that's bound to the uh, size of your credit card uh, rather than uh, your game progression. 
So you don't need to worry about copying one to one, but you can adapt your gameplay and your playstyle based on what you see uh, other people using, and it's going to work for you. A skill that I want to mention is Toxic Flame. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about Toxic Flame. Uh, it's very strong for a lot of reasons. Uh, the first one is that it pierces all targets, meaning that it can deal damage to an insane amount of enemies, but also it's an Average Over Time ability. Uh, the Average Over Time is extremely valuable in um, Undecember. The main reason why Damage Over Time is so valuable in Undecember is that when you're fighting against trash monsters, any main skill is going to obliterate them. Uh, the problem comes with bosses and some nasty elites, uh, they can be very difficult to handle, uh, especially chapter bosses. Uh, they have a lot of attack patterns that you need to learn, and you need to learn how to dodge their attacks to avoid getting one shot. So if I'm just focusing uh, on dodging his attacks and just trying to stay alive, which is very important, I'm not dealing any damage at all to this guy. On the other hand, I could be applying a damage over time, and as you can see, it's dealing damage while uh, I'm just dodging and walking around the arena and staying alive, which is not something that I could be easily doing with other skills. When you have an opening, you just, you know, go to the boss and you go to have a chat with him. But overall, having a damage over time ability that can deal damage while you are uh, actively dodging skills uh, is extremely valuable. And it's one of the reasons why the majority of people uh, um, are, are using uh, some form of damage over time unless they have specific builds that deal an insane amount of burst damage while also being uh, very tanky. So while my main suggestion uh, is still to test skills uh, and see which ones you like and make a build that you enjoy, um, I, I used Frost Ball and Frost Shock for the whole campaign essentially. If you want my suggestion for one skill or at least one kind of skill to use, uh, the vote would be for Toxic Flame uh, and or any combination of uh, damage over time abilities uh, that will make your life easier against uh, act bosses. When you reach 100% exploration in a map, you will get this currency, just a of courage. Uh, what you can do with it is come to the ore shop uh, NPC and purchase a bunch of stuff. There are a lot of different things that you can buy from her and they're all crafting materials. Uh, I would say the rune birth ess essence is going to be the most valuable for you uh, because it's going to bring you closer to the mileage which will guarantee you a six link uh, rune. And six link runes are one of the big uh, uh, damage spikes uh, that you can get in the game because it will allow you to add an extra multiplier to um, to your skills. So if you have a bunch of this currency and you want to invest it, uh, I would say start buying some of these essences and get that sweet, sweet uh, six link rune going. Once you complete Act 10, uh, you're going to unlock this area, which opens a new city hub. There is going to be a very long and in-depth uh, quest that will clearly explain to you um, the end game map system, essentially. You're going to drop these from monsters, but you can also purchase them uh, from an NPC. And they work exactly like the maps uh, in uh, Path of Exile. If you're not familiar with how it works, is you drop these things, you insert them in this uh, Chaos Altar, there are going to be some modifiers that you can apply to the map. Depending on the rarity of the thing, there are going to be even more modifiers to the map. And what these are, are essentially areas of the campaign uh, with a lot of monsters, harder monsters and, and higher tier gear. Uh, I don't want to go too much in depth uh, with the mapping system because, again, the quest uh, that explains how the mapping system works uh, is pretty well done. It teaches you all the different aspects, uh, the daily quests that you do, uh, the compendium, the fact that you can upgrade a bunch of stuff to get even more drops. Uh, it's all well explained in the game, so you're not going to have uh, a hard time uh, uh, getting used to this system. If you're a new player and you went to the recruitment board, you probably noticed that there are a couple of uh, uh, group uh, activities that you can do with other people. Uh, one is this one, which is a tower defense system. It's, it's not particularly difficult. Uh, start doing it as soon as you can, because the rewards can be pretty decent. Uh, you get some gold, which is very valuable. Um, you get some of the other currency, you know, the 
this thing, the Gemstone of Courage. Uh, it doesn't take very long. It, it's fun. I find it quite enjoyable. Just do one at a difficulty level that you can handle. These are a lie. What I mean by that is that require level 30. If you go there at level 30, you're very likely going to be one shot. If you go to this guy at level 50, you're very likely to be one shot, even if your resistances are kept. Um, the suggested level is, is not very good. <laughs> uh, you're, you're not going to carry your team at level 50 here and at level 30 here. Uh, what you want to do is uh, wait until the last day, especially if you just barely reach the requirement. Um, try to get a few more levels and then join in <laughs> to see if you can provide a little bit of help. But nowadays, uh, since the game has already been out uh, for quite a bit, uh, there are many high-level players who will still join it to get the rewards uh, and maybe you will get very carried. That's how I did uh, the caravan uh, the first time. Uh, there were a few very high-level players and even after event, everyone else died, they managed to clear it. it uh, very easily but yeah if, if you are level 30 and you get here and you get one shot uh, don't worry it happens the best thing that you can do after dying is uh, spectate the battle um, to see how the fight goes uh, and what happens and what people are doing because there are a few things that you have to learn uh, during the fight to make sure that you can actually handle them uh, later when you are at a higher level the auction house it's another very valuable thing. Now, some people think that it's pay to win because, you know, oh, well, you need this currency, obviously the credit card. Um, the auction house is actually a very good source of free premium currency. I'm doing air quotes right now. What I mean by that is that um, I put these two things for sale. No one bought this one, so I'm going to take it back. But someone bought this, so at the time, after the end of the time, I can actually get this currency back and I will go to 68. And I could just keep selling things and making more of that currency. There are some things that sell very well and very quickly, especially uniques. Uh, looking for stuff here in the auction house is fairly intuitive, although when you want to reset uh, things, uh, it wastes a little bit of time. It's not extremely well done, but still, it, it's pretty usable. So, for example, if I wanted to buy something like this, uh, you know, I just made uh, 11 of that currency from selling something, I could buy it right away. Or I could use some of the currency that I made over the course of a few days to purchase something more expensive or bid on something. It's very valuable. It's very valuable. Of course, it will take you time uh, to get gear that may be worth selling, but eventually you're getting there. Since I talk about Unix, uh, it's about time to mention the item compendium. The item compendium is this magical place where you just put your stuff, your unique stuff. Not only does it serve as extra storage, but the things that you store here, uh, they end up completing your collection, and your collection actually gives you in-game bonuses. Uh, these are all the extra drop chances that I have, uh, extra chances of encounter encountering the loot goblin, I drop more gold, uh, item rarity, essence drop chance in increased, uh, so there's a lot of nice stuff that, that you can get from completing your item companion. It's one of the reasons why people don't really rush to sell uniques unless they have uh, more than one copy of that specific unique. Because first you want to complete your collection, then you make some cash by selling them to other players. The rune compendium is extremely important because a lot of these runes are actually sold from the shop, from Gwendolyn, Catherine, I don't remember her name. Uh, you just pay 5,000 gold, you purchase the rune and you put it here in the shop and all these runes eventually um, will combine uh, and provide you with uh, some uh, nice rewards. Uh, at the moment my collection is 161 runes, so I make it to here. Uh, a thing worth mentioning is that some runes uh, are only available for dropping, of course, from the guild, from other places. Some are only available from synthesis. The way synthesis runes work uh, is that you can either drop uh, or purchase uh, some runes uh, here from a lady, and then you can bring them to the alchemy shop, uh, to the alchemy station, to synthesize them. What synthesize them means is it will take three runes that you give to the alchemy station 
and it will transform into one random rune of the same rarity. It feels like a waste, but those synthesis runes can only be obtained through this process. Um, it's RNG, so you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, I got several uh, poison penetration runes and fire penetration runes. I did not get a single cold uh, penetration rune, and it feels a little bit bad. Uh, it's RNG, you don't know what you're going to get. When you have runes available, just come, just come to the uh, alchemist station, and all your spare ones can be dumped here to see if you can get some of those nice uh, synthesis runes. A guild is something that you should join or create very soon, but right now I would suggest you to look for one with uh, some slots available. Uh, the reason why it's very important is that there are some guild buffs that you can get uh, when your guild activates them and they can be pretty good, but also there are some things that you can purchase uh, from the guild base. When you donate gold or guild tokens to your guild, uh, guild tokens drop from monsters for the most part, you're going to get back this currency as a reward and you can spend it at this NPC to purchase the synthesis runes uh, material. So even if you're not a social person at all, you can just join a guild, be super chill, uh, get your rewards. And that's how I set up my guild, by the way. There are essentially no requirements, just play, make donations, get the rewards, uh, get the buffs, uh, and, and enjoy your life in the game. I believe this, this covers pretty much everything in terms of game content from the beginning of your adventure in Undecember to the early stages of the late game. Uh, both in, in terms of like activities that you can do as well as micromanagement uh, that, that, should, that you should track on a daily basis to make sure that you're growing uh, uh, your character as well. Uh, there are some things that I didn't talk about, like the relics or like the void uh, challenges. Uh, they come much later in the game and once you reach uh, that phase, um, it's going to be well introduced by the game, so there is no need to worry about it when you are in the early stages of the game. So that will be all for today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them um, in the comments down below or you can join my Discord. Uh, to ask me stuff in real time. Uh, I usually stream a couple of times a week, uh, it tends to be Monday and Thursday, uh, although my Discord is usually the best place to be up to date to my stream schedule because it's bound to my work schedule as well. So I wish you all happy grinding in December and I will see you next time. Bye guys, take care!